Sunan Abu Daud, The Book of Combing Chapter on the Prohibition of Combing Often Al-Irfa It was narrated from Abdullah bin Mughaffal that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade combing the hair except every other day. This hadith is graded daif or weak. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Burada that one of the companions of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, traveled to see Fadala bin Ubaid when he was in Egypt. He arrived, he said, I have not come merely to visit you, but you and I heard a hadith from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and I hope that you had some knowledge of it. He said, What is it? He said such and such. He said, Why do I see you looking disheveled when you are the Amir of the land? He said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade us too much irfa. He said, Why do I see you without shoes? He said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to tell us to go barefoot sometimes. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Footnote, Al-Irfa, its general meaning is luxuriousness. It is explained in the narration of An-Nasai, number 5061, as to comb your hair every day. Comments, the summary of this chapter and what follows of exceptions is that a man should not busy himself with beautification like a woman. If he has hair, he should take care of it but not grooming it every day, rather every other day at most. See number 4163. If he has clothing, he should be grateful and take care of it, but not struggle with desire to have more and more and nicer and nicer clothing. It was narrated that Abu Umama said, The companions of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, mentioned this world in his presence one day, and he said, Are you not listening? Are you not listening? Al-Badada, shabbiness, is a part of faith. Al-Badada, shabbiness, is part of faith, meaning at takahul This hadith is graded hasan or good. Abu Daud said, he is Abu Umama bin Thalab al-Ansari. Footnote, Al-Badada, meaning in one's appearance, clothing and otherwise, according to Al-Khatabi, the saying of Abu Daud meaning At-Takahul, which means being dry or arid, and according to Al-Azimabadi, that is, one's skin appears starkly dry. Chapter on, it is recommended to wear perfume. It was narrated that Anas bin Malik said, the Prophet, peace be upon him, had a sukkah, kind of container from which he would apply perfume. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Chapter on taking care of one's hair. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever has hair, let him take care of it. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Comments. See the comments after number 4160. Chapter on dye for women. Karima bint Humam narrated that a woman asked Aisha about dying with henna. She said, There is nothing wrong with it, but I do not like it because my beloved, peace be upon him, did not like its smell. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Abu Daud said, meaning die for the hair of the head. It was narrated from Umm al Hassan from her grandmother from Aisha that Hind, the daughter of Utbah, said, O Prophet of Allah, accept my pledge of allegiance. He said, I shall not accept your pledge of allegiance until you change your hands by applying henna to them, for they look like the paws of a predator. This hadith is graded daif or weak. It was narrated from Safiya bint Isma from Aisha who said, A woman gestured from behind a curtain with a letter for the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, in her hand. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, withdrew his hand and said, I do not know whether it is the hand of a man or a woman. She said, It is a woman. He said, if you were a woman, you would have changed your nails, meaning with henna. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Chapter on hair extensions. It was narrated from Humad bin Abdurrahman that he heard Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan during the Hajj. When he was on the mimbar, he took a lock of hair that was in the hand of a guard and said, O people of al Madina, where are your scholars? I heard the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbidding things such as this. And he said, The children of Israel were doomed when their women folk started to wear such things. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Wigs and hair extensions are unlawful. It was narrated from Nafia that Abdullah said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, curse the woman who applies hair extensions, and the woman for whom that is done, and the woman who does tattoos, and the woman for whom that is done. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. 
It was narrated from Al-Kama, from Abdullah, that he said, Allah has cursed the women who tattoo, and the women for whom that is done. Muhammad, one of the narrators, said, and the women who apply hair extensions. Uthman, one of the narrators, said, and al mutanammisat Then the two reports concur, and the women who have their teeth separated for the purpose of beautification, altering the creation of Allah. News of that reached a woman of Banu Asid who was called Umi Yaqub, Uthman added, who used to read the Qur'an. Then the two reports concur. She came to him and said, I have heard that you curse the women who tattoo and the women who have that done. Muhammad said, and the women who apply hair extensions. Uthman said, and al misat. Then the two reports concur, and those who have their teeth filed. Uthman said, for the purpose of beautification, altering the creation of Allah. He said, Why should I not curse those whom the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, cursed? And it is mentioned in the Book of Allah, exalted is he. She said, I have read what is between the covers of the Mushaf and I did not find it. He said, By Allah, if you have read it, you would have found it. Then he recited, And whatsoever the Messenger gives you, take it. And whatsoever he forbids you, abstain from it. Quran, Surah Al-Hashr, chapter 59, verse 7. She said, I see some of that in your wife. He said, Go in and look. So she went in. Then she came out, and he said, What did you see? Uthman said, She said, I did not see anything. He said, If that had been the case, she would not have stayed with us. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Footnote al mutanammisat from Nams, plucking the hair. The woman who does it is called Namisa, and the one who has it done to herself is called Mutanammisa. It is also said that it refers to plucking the eyebrows as explained by the author after number 4170. See numbers 5094 and 5102 of Sunan an nasai It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, The woman who applies hair extensions and the woman for whom that is done, an and al mutanamisa the woman who tattoo and the woman for whom that is done when there is no ailment that would justify doing that are all cursed. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Abu Daud said, The explanation of al-vasila is the one that connects women's hair to the hair, and al-mastosila is the one it is done to. And namisa is the one who plucks the eyebrow to make it thin, and al-mutanamisa is the one it is done for. Al-washima is the one who puts moles on their faces with kohol or ink, and al-mustoshima is the one it is done for. Footnote al mustoshima is the one it is done for. This is the author's definition of the terms that have been translated as tattooing, applying hair extensions, and namisa. It was narrated that Sayyid bin Jubair said, There is nothing wrong with al karamil This hadith is graded daif, or weak. Footnote al karamil meaning silk or woolen threads braided and added to the hair. Abu Daud said, It is as if he is of the view that what is forbidden is women's hair. Abu Daud said, Ahmed said, there is nothing wrong with al karamil Chapter on Refusing Perfume It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever is given perfume, he should not refuse it, because it has a good smell and it is light to carry. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Chapter on Women Wearing Perfume When Going Out it was narrated from Abu Musa that the Prophet peace be upon him said, If a woman puts on perfume and passes by people so that they can smell her fragrance, then she is such and such, and he spoke sternly. This hadith is graded hasan or good. It was narrated from Obed, the freed slave of Abu Rum, from Abu Huraira. He said that he met a woman and noticed the smell of perfume coming from her, and her hem was dragging and stirring up a cloud of dust. He said, O slave woman of the compeller, Al-Jabbar, have you come from the masjid? She said, yes. He said, and you put on perfume for that? She said, yes. He said, I heard my beloved Abul Qasim say, no prayer will be accepted from a woman who puts on perfume to visit this masjid until she goes back and performs ghusl like that done for sexual impurity. This hadith is graded hasan or good. It was narrated from Basir bin Said from Abu Huraira who said, the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, any woman who has been scented with bukhur, Incense should not attend Isha prayer with us. Ibn Nufal, one of the narrators, said, The later. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Footnote. Ibn Nufal, one of the narrators, said, The later, meaning the later of the two night prayers, Isha as opposed to Maghrib. 
Comets. It is customary in Arabian countries to burn incense like aloes wood, oud, to fumigate their clothes. The fragrance of the smoke perfumes the body and clothing. Therefore, women are not allowed to use it prior to leaving their homes. Chapter on Khaluk for men. Footnote. Khaluk, a kind of perfume containing saffron. It was narrated from Yahya bin Yamar from Amar bin Yasir, who said, I came to my family at night and my hands were chapped, so they put khaluk on me that contained saffron. The next day I went to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and greeted him with salam, but he did not return my greeting nor welcomed me. He said, go and wash this off. So I went and washed it, then I came, but there was a spot of it left on me. I greeted him with salam, but he did not return my greeting nor welcome me. He said, go and wash this off. So I went and washed it off, then I came and greeted him with salam, and he returned my greeting and welcomed me, and said, The angels do not attend the funeral of a disbeliever bringing him glad tidings, or come near one who is smeared with saffron, nor one who is sexually impure. But he granted a concession allowing the one who is sexually impure, if he is going to sleep, eating, or drinking, to perform wudu. This hadith is graded daif, or weak. It was narrated from Ibn Juraj. Umar bin Atta bin Abi al-Khawaz informed me that he heard Yahya bin Yamar from a man who informed him from Amar bin Yasir. Umar said that Yahya named that man, but Umar forgot his name. He said, I used Khaluk, the same story, but the former report is much more complete as it mentions washing. I, Ibn Jurayd, said to Umar, were they in Ihram? He said, no, they were residents. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Comments, meaning such perfumes are not lawful for men whether they are in ihram or not. It was narrated from Rabia bin Anas that his two grandfathers said, We heard Abu Musa say, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Allah does not accept the prayer of a man who has any khaluk on his body. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Abu Daud said, His two grandfathers were Zad and Ziyad. It was narrated that Anas said, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade wearing saffron for men. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. It was narrated from Al-Hasan bin Abi Al-Hasan from Amar bin Yasir that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, There are three whom the angels do not come near, the dead body of a disbeliever, a man who smears himself with khaluk, and a person who is sexually impure unless he performs wudu. This hadith is graded daif, or weak. It was narrated that Al-Walid bin Uqba said, When the Prophet of Allah conquered Mecca, the people of Mecca started bringing their boys to him, and he supplicated for blessing for them and patted their heads. I was brought to him, but I was wearing khaluk, and he did not touch me because of the khaluk. This hadith is graded daif, or weak. It was narrated from Anas bin Malik that a man entered upon the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and there were traces of yellow on him. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, rarely spoke directly to a man about a thing that he disliked. When he left, he said, Why didn't you tell him to wash it off? This hadith is graded daif or weak. Chapter on what has been reported about hair. It was narrated from Sufyan, from Abu Ishaq, that Al-Bara said, I have never seen anyone with Lima wearing a red hulla who was more handsome than the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. Muhammad bin Suleiman, one of the narrators added, he had hair that touched his shoulders. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Abu Daud said, this is how Israel narrated it from Abu Ishaq, it touched his shoulders. Shuba said, it came down to his earlobes. Footnote, it came down to his earlobe. They say that there are three main terms for the length of hair. al juma which reaches the shoulders. Al-Wafra, which reaches the earlobes. Al-Lima, which is between the earlobes and the shoulders. It was narrated from Shubha from Abu Ishaq that Al-Bara said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, had hair that reached his earlobes. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Abu Daud said Shubha was mistaken in it. It was narrated from Thabit that Anas said, The hair of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, came to his earlobes. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. It was narrated from Humad that Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, said, The hair of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, came to halfway down his ears. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. It was narrated that Aisha said, The hair of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was more than al-Wafra and less than al-Jumma. This hadith is graded hasan, or good. Footnote 
The hair of the Messenger of Allah was more than al-wafra and less than al-jumma, meaning lima. It came down between his earlobes and his shoulders. Chapter on Parting of Hair It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, The people of the book used to let their hair hang down, and the idolaters used to part their hair. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, liked to act in accordance with the people of the book in matters concerning which there was no command. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to let his hair hang down, then later on he parted it. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments The implication is that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was ordered to part after being allowed not to. It was narrated that Aisha said, When I wanted to part the hair of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, I would make the parting from the crown of his head and let his forelock hang between his eyes. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Chapter on regarding growing hair long. It was narrated that Vail bin Hujr said, I came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and I had long hair. When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saw me, he said, This is bad, this is bad. So I went back and cut it off, and the next day I came to him and he said, I did not intend you, but this is better. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Chapter on regarding men braiding their hair. It was narrated that Mujahid said, Umehani said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, came to Mecca with four braids, Ghadair, meaning Akais. This hadith is graded daif, or weak. Chapter on Shaving the Head It was narrated from Abdullah bin Jafar that the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave the family of Jafar three days to mourn. Then he came to them and said, Do not weep for my brother after today. Then he said, Call my brother's sons for me. We were brought to him with our hair like chick feathers, and he said, Call the barber for me, and he told him to shave our heads. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments There is no harm in shaving the head for men, but women are prohibited from doing so. Chapter on a boy with a lock of hair It was narrated from Umar bin Nafi, from his father, from Ibn Umar, who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade al kaza and al kazar is when a boy's head is shaved and some of his hair is left. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments This narration clearly shows that shaving off half or a portion of the head is not permitted. It was narrated from Hamad, Ayyub informed me from Nafi'ah from Ibn Umar, that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him forbade al kazar which is when a boy's head is shaved, leaving a lock of hair. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. It was narrated from Ma'mad, from Ayyub, from Nafia, from Ibn Umar, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw a boy, part of whose head had been shaved and a part of it left. He told them not to do that and said, shave all of it or leave all of it. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on what has been reported about a concession for a lock of hair. It was narrated that Anas bin Malik said, I had a lock of hair and my mother said, I shall not cut it. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to stretch it out and play with it. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Al-Hajjaj bin Hassan said, We entered upon Anas bin Malik and my sister Al-Mughira told me, You were a boy at that time and you had two braids or locks of hair. He patted your head and prayed for blessing for you and he said, Shave off these two or cut them for this is the fashion of the Jews. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Chapter on trimming the mustache. It was narrated from Abu Huraira, who attributed it to the Prophet, peace be upon him. The fitra is five things, or five things are part of the fitra. Circumcision, shaving the pubes, plucking the armpit hairs, clipping the nails, and paring the mustache. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. It was narrated from Nafi'a from Abdullah bin Umar that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him commanded that the mustache be trimmed and the beard be left to grow. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated that Anas bin Malik said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him stipulated a time for us to shave the pubic hair, clip the nails, pare the mustache, and pluck the armpit hair once every 40 days. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Zuhair said, I read to Abdul Malik bin Abi Suleiman and he read it before Abu Azubair and Abu Azubair reported it from Jabir who said, We used to let grow our beards long except during Hajj and Umrah. This hadith is graded daif or weak. 
Chapter on Plucking Gray Hairs It was narrated from Amr bin Shu'ib from his father that his grandfather said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Do not pluck gray hairs, for there is no Muslim whose hair turns gray in Islam. He said, narrating from Sufyan, but it will be light for him on the day of resurrection. In the Hadith of Yahya, it says, But Allah will record one hasana, good deed for it, and will erase one sin from him for it. This Hadith is graded hasan or good. Comments It is prohibited to pull out the white hair from the beard or head. Blackening of hair is also prohibited as mentioned in the next narration. Chapter on Dying Hair It was narrated from Abu Huraira, who attributed it to the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Jews and the Christians do not die, so be different from them. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments On the basis of this narration, some scholars say that dyeing the hair with henna or other things is an obligation. But others say it is only permitted, but leaving the hair white or gray is also lawful. It was narrated from Abu Az-Zubair that Jabir bin Abdullah said, Abu Kuhafa was brought on the day of the conquest of Mecca, and his hair and beard were white like Taghama. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Change this with something, but avoid black. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Footnote, Taghama, a white fruit from a type of plant. Comments, dyeing the head with black is prohibited. It was narrated that Abu Dhar said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The best of that with which you can change these gray hairs are henna and katam. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Footnote Katam, a dye which was dark. Some of them say it was a dye made by mixing a plant with henna or other plants. It was narrated from Ubaidullah, meaning Ibn Iyad. Iyad informed us from Abu Rithma, who said, I set out with my father to go to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and we saw him with hair coming down to his ears, dyed with henna, and wearing two green burd. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. This report was narrated from Ibn Abjar, from Iyad bin Lakid, from Abu Rithma, regarding this narration. He said, My father said to him, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, Show me that which is on your back, for I am a tabib, a healer. He said, Allah is at tabib rather you are just one who soothes, its healer is the one who created it. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. It was narrated from Sufyan, from Iyad bin Lakith, from Abu Rithma, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, I came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, with my father, and he said to a man or to my father, Who is this? He said, My son. He said, Your son is not accountable for your sins, and he had stained his beard with henna. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. It was narrated from Thabit that Anas was asked about the hair dye of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he replied that he did not dye his hair. But Abu Bakr and Umar, may Allah be pleased with them both, dyed their hair. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments There were only a few white hair in the beard and head of the Prophet, peace be upon him. These hairs were dyed. Anas had not seen him dyeing his hair, so he denied this fact, whereas other companions saw him dyeing and they confirmed this. Chapter on regarding yellow dye It was narrated from Ibn Umar that the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to wear sandals of tanned leather, and he dyed his beard with vars and saffron, and Ibn Umar used to do that too. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Footnote Vars Memicillon tinctorium, a plant of Yemen used as a liniment and yellowish dye. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, A man who had dyed his hair with henna passed by the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he said, How handsome this is! Then another man who had dyed his hair with henna and cut them passed by and he said, This is more handsome than the other. Then another man who had dyed his hair with a yellowish color passed by and he said, This is the most handsome of all. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Chapter on what has been reported about black dye. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, at the end of time, some people will dye their hair with black like the breasts of pigeons. They will not even smell the fragrance of paradise. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments Dyeing the hair black is unlawful for both men and women, but katam or henna can be used for this purpose. Chapter on Using Ivory It was narrated that Thoban, the freed slave of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, traveled, 
The last person among his family whom he spoke to was Fatima, and when he came back, the first person he entered upon was Fatima. He returned from a campaign of his, and she had hung up a piece of hair cloth or a curtain on her door, and she had adorned Al Hassan and Al Hussein with silver bracelets. He came, but he did not enter, and she thought that what kept him from entering was what he had seen, so she tore down the curtain and took the bracelets off the boys and broke them into pieces and gave some to each child. Then she went to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and they, the boys, were weeping. He took it from them and said, O Thoban, take this to the family of so and so a household in al Madina, for I do not like these members of my household to enjoy their share of good things in the life of this world. O Thoban, buy a necklace made of sinews for Fatima and two bracelets of ivory. This hadith is graded da'if, or weak. 